Well, here we are once again, once more, unto the breach, with metres and metres of fabric that I have purchased, thanks to my wonderful patrons and Kofi supporters. Thank you so much, you guys have bought this for me. I, as always, have no idea how to actually pattern things, so I used a coat that I already owned that was about the right size, and I allowed seam allowance, and I just drew round it in the panel sections, and then I cut them to where they roughly looked like they were in the pictures I could find of the repo costume. Hello, my Chaos Jelly Spoons. Yes, that name is sticking, it's happening, it's a thing now. So, technically, I am now on day three of this cosplay for April. We are on April. No, wait, we're not. We're on March. Month are we in? March. I'm in the March cosplay, which is... Oh, you can't see very well, but it is the beginnings of a coat. For I am doing... Insert picture here. I am doing uh, The Grave Robber from Repo the Genetic Opera. If you have not seen it, I highly recommend that you look up the DVD or find a totally legal way to watch it on the internet or just listen to the soundtrack and see some of the video clips around there. Oh, it's a freaking awesome movie. So I have been on Pinterest and Google and just looking at images and as many as I can find and sort of... The problem with Repo is that it is not a very a crazy well-known movie, so when you look for images from it, you tend to get the same ones sort of recycled. So what I've had to do is try and find those. And I've been trying to look for sort of behind the scenes photos or video clips, but there really isn't many. And I so what, what I've had to do is take sort of stills from the movie and then brighten them, which is tricky and annoying and frustrating, but I'm, I'm getting there because I do want this cosplay to be as accurate as I can make it because otherwise it'll be very, Otherwise it'll be very difficult to tell who I'm being because this is the kind of character where you can tweak a few bits and pieces but if you change a lot of it too much it won't be very clear who you are just because it's not like the, it's not like Molly Mork where you can edit a lot of things because you're still a purple tiefling and it's fairly obvious. But this has got to be a bit more specific so I'm trying to sort of match colours and get it as good as I can. Um, I do have a small confession though. Um, I technically might have started this cosplay a couple of weeks early um, while I was waiting for something for Lucian to arrive. I got a bit overexcited about the fact that I wouldn't have to buy a wig to do Grave Robber um, and I may have styled the wig back in February because I got a bit overexcited. But still, still March cosplays. So here we are, day three. Let's do this. This is me sorting out my cosplay. Although I know there is no demand for this character and my videos will flop. Also watching the movie while we're doing it. <laughs> Alright, this is what we get. I am recycling my old- I was gonna use my Judas wig but it's just a bit too blonde um, so instead I am using my beautiful, beautiful sort of like early 2000s highlight style wig which I used for Sleeping Beauty years and years and years ago and actually is doing half the job for me because I don't need to add like all his blonde highlight e bits. Look at this sassy fucker. I was born to cosplay this sassy fucker. Oh I'm so excited. Also the red fleur for his coat's arriving soon. I'm so hype. I'm so hype. Look at this beautiful guy. So far, so good. First piece of the cosplay complete. Colours in the wig, fits done. I have often wondered over the course of this month while I was making yet another coat whether it says something about me that a lot of the characters that I choose to cosplay do indeed have rather long, magnificent coats. Come to think of it, I think Peter Pan is the only favourite character of mine who doesn't have a massive coat or cloak or something like that. Molly Moore, Lucian, Grave Robber, hmm. I've been testing a technique today, because once again I'm not doing this properly. So this edge and this bottom edge down here, they are going to be sort of the, this is the back of the coat. And down the back there is going to be a slip where the back bits of the coat, like those are the sections and then there's like a slip down the back of the coat. So what I'm trying to do is I have sewed the bottom and up the seam. So where the little slit's gonna be. And those bits, so down here and down the bottom, those bits I 
flipped so that I've got a nice sort of, you can't see the stitching on the edge of the lining. But everything else I'm going to stitch together normally because then there will be more excess so that I can attach the panels together because I've been discovering while I've been doing these other panels that despite how pretty my edges look, they don't need to look pretty because you're never going to see them. <laughs> this is a learning process, guys. I'm... Yeah. It, yeah. It, but it's going okay so far. It is about 5am. Because what is time? Anyway, I have done a bunch of this today. Successfully. Let's have a look. Alright, so this is progress thus far on Le Coat. It is softer than the coat they have in the movie because this is what I can afford. But in terms of it fitting together and everything, it's going to be pretty cool. So I have got a lot of it to a good length. I then need to cut the rest and I have only got about... I've only got about three panels left that I need to line. So yeah, I've got these two side pieces and this back one. And then I'm going to stitch the whole thing together. Hello, me and my raccoon onesie. And I'm going to stick the whole thing together. And then I'm going to start working on like pockets and actual proper details and stuff. So yeah, it's all going okay. Something I've had to accept as I'm making all these coats is just don't judge it until you have the final product in front of you because a lot of the time before it's done it just looks horrendous. Like this massive pile of just lining where it's just sew together. Oh man, it's been great fun and I've learned a lot of new techniques doing this but yeah, just, but yeah, do not judge a coat until it is done. And also as a side note, I went through two pots of pins doing this, like Oh, I must have used hundreds because I wanted to pin it all together and make sure it fitted me and get the shape done. And then I started sewing it all up. It was insane. And these are half of the diagrams I did. I would watch this movie religiously. I was watching clips on the internet. I was looking at Pinterest and I was drawing it from all the different angles. And there was one particular picture I got and I finally managed to sort of brighten it enough that I could see the back of the coat. And I realized, oh God, he's got like a belt loop on the back. Just, ah, yeah, it's been a work of love. I've just finished sewing the lining of this half of the coat and I am now sewing lining of this half of the coat and every time I pick it up it's like the molly coat all over again it's just so much there's just so much work there's <laughs> just so much coat oh and it doesn't even have sleeves yet oh fuck all right let's do this and so once again I had to face off against my mortal enemy sleeves I am getting better at sleeves. The problem was I didn't have enough fabric left over to make a full sleeve, so I had to make them out of scraps, but I kind of thought that worked for the aesthetic I was going for. Um, it was an interesting time, but I did manage to get them all sewed together. It was quite fun in the end. And I also made a pocket, which I was super proud of, because I only spotted the pocket very last minute and added it to a bunch of my pictures. And then this arrived! This is the beautiful, beautiful fabric. It looks a lot more vibrant on camera than it does in real life. It is duller than it appears, but man, I'm loving it. I decided not to go full just wine red. I thought it looked cooler because it had the different spots in it and splodges. And as I looked closer at the pictures of his costume, it did seem to have like splodges of dark and light and different things. So not quite the wine red of the original costume, but it'll do. And also the wine red fur, it, um, yeah, it was about 30 quid a meter. And uh, I am not asking my patrons for that much. And also I... It, I'm not necessarily going to wear this to a con. This is a month costume that I am making for my own fun. So yeah, 100% accuracy did go ever so slightly out of the window just because in the interest of affording it. But yeah. Oh, and this is the belt that I noticed very last minute actually is on the back of the coat. So I added it and I added some buttons as well. I was kind of proud that I spotted that detail and it does make the back of the coat look more interesting. It was kind of plain before and now there's like pockets and everything and Yep, this is it pretty much finished, only with about three pins in it, and I've just got a few little bits left to do. I did not end up doing much hemming on the bottom because it just looked more fun being messy. Again, I'm just leaning into the aesthetic here and totally cheating on having to do a bottom hem, but hey, it's my costume and, and I say it's okay, so yeah, it's totally fine.
And of course, the dreaded sleeves actually went on without too much of a problem. I was more surprised by the fact that it was okay sewing them than I was by anything else. Here's the back of the coat looking pretty okay. It looks kind of roughed up, which is exactly the vibe I was going for, really. So yeah, that worked. One of the last things on my list was to try and make his satchel and I wanted to try and make it out of a brighter colour so it would stand out. His in the movie was pretty much the same colour as his coat and I was worried it wouldn't show up on camera so I used a slightly lighter shade of brown for this and I just essentially folded it and cut it until it fit and then I added buttons and tags and toggles and just stitched and stitched and stitched and stitched and stitched, checked that it would hold a sketchbook and it did and then added a bunch of stuff and then I added the strap across the front as well and it fitted and it went over the fur and it didn't catch in the fur too much and the button does do up but it's very difficult one-handed <laughs> oh I stabbed myself in the thumb as well hence the blaster because you know you've got to have injuries from cosplay that's just how it happens <laughs> Here you can see what I was talking about, so I didn't want to use just more dark brown because in the movie it is sort of a very darker brown bag, but it wouldn't have shown up quite so well on camera, so I'm, gl I'm glad I changed that, so yeah. Accuracy, pff, be damned. Alright, the day has finally come. It is. The day before my birthday and I'm trying to get as much of this finished as possible. I am so nearly done. Um, you've got the actual coat and bag done, and now I am doing this. <laughs> All right, this is a plan I've had for a while. Um, bear with me. Okay, this is an old tattoo set I used to use when I had a very brief stint doing some very... Anyway, so I no longer need any of it. I can't resell it because one, it's too old and cheap and also because it has been opened and a part of it got um, damaged. So my plan is that I am going to use... Where are you? Get out. Get out. <clears throat> I am going to use the body of one of my machines and I am going to turn that into the Zydrate gun. So uh, bear with me, here we go. And here we have a Zydrate gun! <laughs> uh, I sort of tried to film myself doing it but it was basically just me wrapping endless amounts of foam and tape around the machine and I made my Zydrate liquid. It does glow in the dark, sort of, but not quite. Um, so yeah, this is um this is my Zydrate gun. It is very top heavy as opposed to bottom heavy, uh, but I'm gonna be storing it like that way down. So yeah, here's uh yeah. Alright, it will it will as they say it will do for a TikTok. <laughs> I really kind of enjoyed making this gun. I got to use all the different bits and pieces and put them together. And I did also make a quick sort of like side harness thing for it to go on and a strap to go around my leg. And actually like, yeah, I'm kind of proud of this. It looks okay. The very last thing I made was this little scarf. I got a bunch of wool and I just tied knots in it and braided it a bit and tied knots and knots and knots and knots. It was so long. The dog was not very happy. I was in his space making this, but I got it done. The last thing to do was to put it all together, so there's the blue undershirt, again I studied the pictures for ages to check what he's wearing, and then I put a white shirt over the top of that. His was a bit grubbier, but I didn't want to make a brand new shirt just for this, so I used one of my ones that I currently had. I then kept adding more and more layers, so then I added the scarf, which sort of goes tight around the top of his neck, and then it tied lower down, and then I added the trousers, I had some grey jeans I used because he had grey jeans in the movie, again I've been studying these pictures for ages trying to get all my colours right added the belt on and the pouch where I'm going to store the Zydrate gun and then the coat on the last layer on top looking cool and it's all looking okay it's coming together and I'm slowly getting excited because it looks okay and it's looking like the character and then boots boots are needed now that I've got an annoying eye for details and it doesn't mean that I do them all correctly and right it just means that I spot them once I've spotted them I can't not spot them so like the pocket the gun having the holster just oh the friggin scarf all this stuff that I just notice and notice and notice and actually it ends up looking okay when I do it it's fine and I'm just if nothing else I'm just glad that I did it I'm glad I noticed and I did it because otherwise I'll be sat there going I ignored that and it's wrong because it's missing something so yeah all in total not too bad and the boots as well I am loving the boots I've had these goth boots for ages they are oh, I love them okay I am ready I'm going to fit my makeup on and I'm going to transform myself into a goth boy. I say that as if it's anything different from my usual aesthetic. Well, uh, finished costume.
is the right next to my Jonathan Sims cosplay that I've been wearing pretty much all week. And um, I'm going to put makeup on. The only problem with uh, Repo is that to get a close up of anyone's face, it's usually kind of blurry and like it's like a still from the movie. There's very few pictures I can find which are quite detailed. I don't know if it's because it's sort of a niche or whatever. So I'm going to go hunting for some proper pictures so I can try and accurately do the makeup and uh, I shall return. This is the um, finished costume. I I like it. <laughs> I'm loving the hair. Um, yeah, I'm pretty warm. I uh, keep choosing cosplayers that require a coat, and I have my big goth boots on right now. <laughs> uh, so I am gonna go and take some pictures and film some TikToks before I get too warm. And uh, then I shall return to talk about what I'm going to do next month. So thank you for sticking with me. All right, all my filming is done. I have done a huge bunch of TikToks that will get barely any traction whatsoever because no one knows what Repo is and even if they do it's kind of had its moment so yeah once again I'm just making this cosplay for me and for you guys so thank you for sticking with me this magical month of March and I am currently deciding what to do for April I'm leaning towards Donkey from Shrek but I'm still considering so I might be asking my Patreon and Kofi supporters to come and help me decide because I'm going back to work for a little bit of April so I might need something that's slightly less full on than this or uh, my Molly coat which I want to finish and then Lucian and stuff so that was all very intricate work so I might need to pick one of my options that was slightly less intricate so watch this space. Thank you for watching everybody, I love you loads, this has been my March Repo cosplay, hang on, this has been March with Repo the Genetic Opera, me doing the Grave Robber costume. Thank you for hanging out with me. Mwah! I love you all. Please go chuck me some support on Ko-fi or Patreon, whichever you would like, and encourage me to continue doing crazy stuff like this. Uh, I love you all.